I don't know what the, the, are we on? Now we're on, okay. Welcome. Good to be with you. I'm Pastor Woody Knudsen, if there are some people here who don't know me. I'm uh, glad to be here. I had to set my alarm clock for the first time in a long time. But it was worth it. It was good to do that. Good to be with you. Uh, I watched the sun come up, and I saw the turkeys roosting on the tree in the neighborhood. So it's, it's a great day. It's a good day. Good to be here. Uh, glorify our Lord. That's why we are here. And we are going to do that together through word and meal. And uh, so I invite you to stand as we begin our worship together. Let everyone with ears listen. Listen to the wisdom of Christ. Jesus proclaims the reign of God. Let everyone with ears listen. Listen to the wisdom of Thank you. 
we confess our sins before God and before one another. Guiding God, we fail to follow you. We have not reached out to our neighbors with selfless and sacrificial love you modeled for us. We have caused harm to others and your creation by our actions and by our unwillingness to act. Forgive us our sins and lead us back onto the path you have trod. In Christ, God meets us where we are and as we are, and for his sake, God makes us whole and holy. Go forth to follow Jesus in the knowledge that your sins are forgiven. Amen. God of creation, by the Holy Spirit, make our hearts to be good soil, rich and nourishing, so that when we hear your word, it will grow in us and bear fruit for the sake of all that you have made. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. Three times in our Gospel this morning, our Lord says to us, listen. And so almost, although for most of us, many of us, the words we are about to hear are familiar. So it requires of us all the more to listen. The Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. Again, Jesus began to teach beside the sea. Such a very large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat on the sea and sat there while the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. He began to teach them many things in parables. And in his teaching, he said to them, listen. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the path and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much we, where it did not have much soil, and it sprang up quickly since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched. And since it had no root, it withered away. 
Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Other seed fell into good soil and brought forth grain growing up and increasing and yielding thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And he said, let anyone with ears to hear listen. When he was alone, those who were around him, along with the twelve, asked him about the parables. And he said to them, to you, it has been give, to you it has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything comes in parables, in order that they may indeed look but not perceive, and may indeed listen but not understand, so that they may not turn again and be forgiven. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones on the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy. But they have no root and endure only for a while. Then when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are those sown among the thorns. These are the ones who hear the word, but the cares of the world, the lure of wealth, the desire of other things comes in, chokes the word, and it yields nothing. And there are the ones sown on the good soil. They hear the word and accept it and bear fruit, thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. He said to them, Is a lamp brought in to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed and not on the lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor is anything secret except to come to light. Let anyone with ears to hear, listen. And he said to them, pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get, and still more will be given you. For to those who have, more will be given, and from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. He also said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, and then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. Word of God, word of life. does work. All right. We are in business. Do you have any more friends that want to come on up? Yes, come on up.
We're glad you're all here today on such a cold day. Was it cold outside? All right. Well, I want to know, do you think you would like to be a farmer? Well, let me explain why I think I want to be a farmer. In my bucket, I have a few things. I have a Bible. And I also have some seeds. What am I going to need in order for the seeds to grow? What am I going to need? Water. What else? Soil. What kind of soil do you think I'm going to need? Dirt. Do, you, do I need good soil or can I just use any old soil to make it grow well? Moist. Yes. So I have to take really good care of my soil, don't I? And I have to water. Oh, thank you. Water my seeds and everything. So did you know that the Bible can help seeds grow? That's why I want to be a farmer. Because every time we read God's word or hear his stories, we are being planted with seeds from God. So what kind of soil do you think you have? Do you think you have good soil or do we have to, whoops, help our soil? What do you think? What kind of soil? I want to have good soil. Do you want to have good soil? Yes. So sometimes, though, I have to say that my soil is dry and that my seeds that are planted might fly away or go away. So I'm going to read a parable from Jesus. And Jesus told parables, which are also called stories, to help us understand about God. So here we go. A farmer scattered seed far and wide, Jesus said. Some seeds landed on poor soil, and they didn't grow. But some seeds landed on rich, deep soil, and they grew into big, healthy plants that gave lots of new seeds. Jesus' friends, they didn't get it. What does that mean, they asked. Jesus answered, the seeds are the good news of God's love. And the farmer is anyone who shares that good news. So if you're a farmer, and you would share good news. If you're a farmer, you'd share good news. So we got somewhere like farmers, like you and me. When we share the good news, guess where it lands? Right in people's hearts. Why doesn't all the seed grow, they asked. Well, sometimes people don't want to listen and learn about God's love. But some people do listen, and God's love grows in their hearts, and soon, they start scattering God's good news, too. Now it makes sense, his friends said. So do you want to be a farmer now? You want to spread God's good news? Yeah. Do you want to be a farmer now and spread God's good news and tell everyone how much they, he loves us? I hope so. All right, let us pray. Hold your hands and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for your stories that help us learn about God. Help us to listen and learn about you. Help us to be your farmers <clears throat> by planting seeds of love wherever we go. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming up here. Let me get this. I invite you to join me in a word of prayer. We give thanks, O oh Lord, this day, for your word is alive and active, sharper than a two-edged sword. 
Make your word in us through your spirit alive and active. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Grace and peace to you. From God our Father and from our Lord and from our Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. I have my backyard fenced in. And behind my fence is a berm with another fence, a six-foot wooden fence. And between my fence and the berm and the wooden fence is about a 15-foot strip of a property that belongs to some mysterious owner, probably a holding company or or state real estate business. And on this swath of property are two box elder trees and some evergreens and a whole lot of weeds. Well, in the fall of 2022, I decided I would turn that patch of land, patch of weeds, into a prairie meadow. And I borrowed my son-in-law's rototiller, which, by the way, happens to still be in my garage. (laughs) You can tell Rob about that, Pastor Rob. Well, I cleared the debris. I tilled the ground, did a little raking. I went online to American Meadows, ordered a pound of mixed seeds, scattered the seeds, on the ground. Now it involved a fair amount of risk doing that because it wasn't the best soil. I hadn't done a very good job of preparing the ground for planting. There was a chance that the seed would get blown away, be eaten by birds possibly, or simply just not germinating. It was a winter of waiting. Spring came. Things began to pop up. I wasn't sure if I had weeds or if I had prairie grass and wildflowers, but I did recognize the thistles that came up. I was determined I would get rid of those thistles. At the end of summer, I was still determined to get rid of those thistles. I didn't realize I would every so often go out there and pull those thistles out. I don't know what kind of root system they have, but they just kept popping back up. But along with that, I have to say, I did have the beginning of a prairie meadow. And I am planning already to add some goldenrod and milkweed this spring. When Jesus tells us that the kingdom of God is like, when he tells us, what he wants us to know about the kingdom of God. He uses parables. And he says it's like spreading the word, spreading the good news, scattering seed. Now, I'm not one to tell God how to do things, but I have to say that's not a very efficient way of getting things done in the kingdom because a lot of the seed that gets scattered burns out. Some of the seed has to compete with thistles. And I think you and I know in our own lives what some of those thistles and thorns are. But given all the seed 
that never comes to maturity. God, in his love and in his mercy, continues to spread seed. And very often he spreads that seed on a Sunday morning when the faithful gather to worship. And God is always hopeful that when the seed matures, it will multiply 30, 60, even a hundredfold. I read a, uh, an editorial by Nicholas Kristof in the New York Times at the beginning of the year, he was talking about the new year and, and so on. He wrote, as the year ends, civilians are dying at a staggering pace in Gaza and the genocide in Darfur may be resuming and our carbon emission risks cooking our, are cooking our planet. But then he says, but something else is also true. In some way, 2023 may still be the best year in the history of humanity. How is this possible, he asked. Then he says, just about the worst calamity that can befall a human is to lose a child, and historically almost half of the children worldwide died before they reached the age of 15. That share has declined steadily since the 19th century, and the United Nations Population Division projects that in 2023, a record low was reached in global child mortality with just 3.6% of newborns dying at the age, by the age of five. Now that's the lowest such figure in human history. It still means that about 4.9 million children died this year, but that's a million fewer than died as recently as 2016. Then he says, or consider extreme poverty. It too has reached a record low, affecting a bit more than 8% of humans, of humans worldwide, including according to the United Nations projections. All these figures are rough, but it seems that about 100,000 people are now emerging from extreme poverty each day so that they can better able to access clean water to feed and educate their children and to buy medicine. Let me repeat that. All, it seems about 100,000 people are now emerging from poverty each day so that they are better able to access clean water, to feed and educate their children and buy medicine. You see, we pray every Sunday, don't we? Your kingdom come, your will be done. Now, we don't always grasp the significance of that prayer because we say it so often and so routinely. But God hears our prayers and answers our prayers, and God is at work scattering seed of love and justice and mercy and healing. As we heard in today's gospel, the kingdom of God is as if, as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise day and night and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how, but the seed produces of itself. First the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head, and the harvest is greater than we could have imagined it to be because we have prayed, your kingdom come. Your will be done. But let's get personal. What about the seed that has been planted in you and in me? I could start by identifying the many ways our congregation is responding to the planted word, we could go through the activities found in our church calendar. I could go on and remind you that you are a reflection of God's love and his peace and his mercy at your home, at work, among friends, with neighbors. 
Let me put it simply. When you offer a blessing to another individual, through words or actions, you are like that mustard seed described in today's gospel. I'd like to share a story, a story about being a blessing. It comes from Naomi Shahab Nye, an Arab American poet. She tells us this story. Wandering around the Albuquerque airport terminal, I heard an announcement. If anyone in the vicinity of gate A4 understands any Arabic, please come to the gate immediately. Well, one pauses these days. Gate A4 was my own gate. I went there. An older woman in full traditional Palestinian embroidered dress, just like my grandma wore, was crumpled on the floor, wailing loudly. Help, said the flight service person. Talk to her. We told her the flight was going to be late, and she did this. I stooped to put my arm around the woman and spoke to her haltingly, haltingly, Shudu ah, shubedu, habibit, shani shwat, minifidik, My Arabic is really poor, you know. <laughs> okay. Well, the minute she heard any word she knew, however, however poorly lose, she stopped crying. She thought the flight had been canceled entirely and she needed to get to El Paso for major medical treatment. I said, no. We're fine. You'll get there just later. Who is picking you up? Let's, let's call him. We called her son, and I spoke with him in English. I, I told him I would stay with his mother and would ride next to her, and then she talked to him. And then we called her other sons just to, for the fun of it. Then we called my dad, and, and he and she spoke for a while in Arabic and, and found out, of course, that they had 10 shared friends. Then I thought, well, why not call some Palestinian poets I know and let them chat with her? This all took about two hours. She was laughing a lot by then, telling about her life, patting my knee, answering questions. She had pulled a sack of homemade mamul cookies, little powdered sugar crumbly mounds stuffed with dates and nuts out of her bag and was offering them to all the women at the gate. To my amazement, not a single woman declined one. It was like a sacrament. The traveler from Argentina, the mom from California, the lovely woman from Laredo, we were all covered with the same powdered sugar and smiling. There is no better cookie. And then the airline broke out free beverages and two little girls from our flight ran around serving us all apple juice, and, and they were covered with powdered sugar, too. And I noticed my new best friend. By now, we were holding hands, had a, a potted plant poking out of her bag, some medicinal, medicinal thing with green furry leaves, such an old country traveling tradition, always carry a plant, always stay rooted to somewhere. As I looked around the gate late, and weary ones and thought, this is the world I want to live in, the shared world. Not a single person in that gate, once the crying and, and confusion stopped, seemed apprehensive about any other person. They took the cookies. I wanted to hug all, hug all these other women. This can still happen anywhere. Not everything is lost. Be a blessing this week. Be a seed in good soil. Amen.
stand for our hymn. Gathered as siblings in Christ, let us affirm our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in the good news of Jesus Christ, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You describe the reign of God in ways people could understand. Help us and all who share your good news to find the right words to connect with others and inspire them to follow you. God, our teacher and healer, 
In mercy, hear our prayer. Your parables often touch down the mysteries of nature, like the growth from a tiny seed. Let us be awed by the miraculous intricacies of your interconnected natural systems, that we might be committed to protect and preserve them for future generations. God, our teacher and healer, in mercy, hear our prayer. Till and keep the hearts of all our leaders, that they might be good soil in which your word of love, justice, and mercy might flourish through all they say and do. For the sake of all your beloved children in the world, God, our teacher and healer, in mercy, hear our prayer. You come to us in the midst of our challenges, holding us in our fears and our pain. Give strength to those who journey with illness or grief, especially Cindy, Shirley, Jean and Betty, Dave, Diana, Joan, Jerry, Henry, Jerry, Maureen, Don, Judy, Barb, Lois, Eleanor, Denny, Stephanie, Peg, Gary, Elizabeth, Sandra, Suzanne, Wayne, and families and friends of our saviors, Eric, Mary, Phyllis, Cheryl, Larry, Glenn, Jill, Leslie, Annie, Linda, Ann, Mickey, Elijah, Randy, Ron. God, our teacher and healer, in mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those living in areas affected by war, extreme poverty, or natural disasters. Mobilize us to respond to those places in the greatest need of your peace and healing. God, our teacher and healer, in mercy, hear our prayer. With gratitude, we lift up, uplift all the saints who have gone before us, whose faith, even as small as a mustard seed, bloomed into great shrubs in which our own faith was fed and nurtured. God, our teacher and healer, in mercy, hear our prayer. Confident that in Christ Jesus, you answer prayer. We lift to you all for whom we pray, aloud and in our hearts, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Let us pray. Generous God, Jesus says to us, the measure you give will be the measure you get, and the still more will be given to you. In gratitude, we return to you 
out of, the, out of our abundance, that you might use our gifts for the flourishing of all that you have made. Amen. I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, the almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus the Christ. And so with all the choirs of angels and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together. Our Father. Those who are worshiping with us online, we invite you, I invite you at this time to take some elements. Know that indeed Christ is present in your place of worship. Take and eat the body of Christ. Take and drink the blood of Christ. I invite all of us who are gathered in this space to recognize also Christ's presence and his healing power to forgive and to love as we receive his body and blood. You may be seated.
giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory, now and forever. Amen. God, who names you, Christ, who claims you, and the Holy Spirit, who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. At this time, I'll call on Pam Keeling if she would uh, do our announcements for us today. Good morning. As most of you know, um, Pastor Scott is preaching at Grace Lutheran today for their 100th anniversary. And Pastor Rob, Cindy, and Tracy are in New Orleans at the ELCA Youth Ministry Network Conference. So we are very fortunate to have Pastor, Pastor Woody here in our midst to, to take great care of us today. I'm going to do the announcements. And as always, we have a full list of fun and inspiring and entertaining events coming up in the next few weeks. First, on Friday, is Jason Gray, um, 7 o'clock, and he is a talented contemporary singer and songwriter. So you can go to the um, website to purchase tickets, and, or if you have trouble, call the office. Next Sunday is the Budget Forum, so if you want more details in advance of our annual meeting, this is the place to be. It'll be between services. The Congregational Annual Meeting will be the, uh, the following Sunday, Feb February 4th, and that will be at 11.30. So um, if you're coming to the 8.30, please come back and attend the annual meeting, or you might want to try the 10.30 service and then just stay for the meeting. Snow tubing extravaganza, Saturday, February 3rd. Hopefully it won't be 10 below, like we've had recently. But you can get your tickets, thanks to special gifts. They're um, half price, and carpooling is available. It's at Cascade, so consider that. Trivia night, February 9th from 6 to 9, and this is to raise funds to send our youth to, the New, or to New Orleans for the ELCA National Gathering. And I don't think I mentioned that that's where Pastor Rob and Cindy and Tracy are in um, a conference preparation for that. Also, for, the, for that, we do need um, silent auction items. So if you're interested in, if you have anything to donate for the silent auction for the trivia night, that'd be super. The Calling, Adult Ed, that series begins Monday, February 12th, and it's at 4 p.m. It runs for four weeks, and through video and conversation, these sessions will follow four individuals striving to become faith leaders as a priest, a rabbi, a pastor, and an imam, so it should be really interesting. Welka is hosting an event February 13th. Sharon Nesbitt Davis, and I know her, she's a friend, and she will be wonderful, so please try to attend. She's written a book called Intended, A Marriage in Black and White, and it's the story of the challenges of an interracial marriage in the 70s. Refreshments, light refreshments will be served, and the event is free and open to all. Sign up is at the welcome desk. And Ash Wednesday, I can't believe it's coming up already, but February 14th will begin the season of Lent. Ash Wednesday, every Wednesday we'll have services at 12 and at 6.30 with a meal and conversation after the noon service and starting at 5 p.m. before the evening service. That should conclude our announcements, but now we have a special guest, Ayla Pachowski. She is the principal at Johnson Elementary We've had a partnership with our neighborhood school for over 10 years. And this year, Johnson has a new principal, Ayla. And you will have the opportunity to hear more about our relationship with Johnson at the forum between the services today. So I hope you'll stay, listen, and learn how easy it is to become a tutor, how flexible we make it, and other ways that you can serve our wonderful neighborhood school. Um, I'm pleased to introduce Principal Ayla. Good morning. It is so great to be with you all this morning. Um, first, I just want to go over some highlights of how your congregation has partnered with us this year. First, we started out the year, and thank you to all of you that helped us do our back-to-school night. We served over 400 families, 
In addition, you also partnered with us for the back to school drive for school supplies. Thank you so much for that. Um, next, you have been incredible with partnering with us in providing coats, um, long sleeve clothing, hats, mittens, all of these things that our um, school needed, uh, especially with the cold winter. One of the hard areas that we navigate at Johnson is the number of families in transition that we have, which means that for that time being, that family is what we would consider homeless. And your congregation has been incredible with helping these families. So I want to say thank you for that. For the background for our school, we have just over 400 students. We're kindergarten through fifth grade, and what we are working on this year is our reading growth, our math growth, and our social um, emotional learning. So we are partnering um, with things such as Second Step and Panorama Playbook to work on things like sense of belonging and self-regulation to make sure that our students don't just have that um, academic growth, but also that behavioral growth. Where you can come in and partner with us is in the tutoring program. I'm going to go more in depth of where we're at right now at the state level and the growth that's required by the state right now for our school but we're looking for um, math tutors and reading tutors, kindergarten through fifth grade. Um, and I, again, I'm going to be happy to go over more of that data with you after um, the service. But today, really the purpose was for me to be able to see you all and say thank you so much for everything you have done for our school. Go in peace. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God.
test. <laughs>